G'day everyone, welcome to another edition of Fly Fishing in Nature's Realm. Now uh, in this episode we're going to tie another fly and um, this fly is a, a very interesting fly. Um, it was uh, developed by a uh, man by the name of John Sullivan um, who uh, is um, no longer with us um, and he is mentioned in an article by Peter Louvre. Now Peter is uh, had a, a great fly tying column in one of the Fisher magazines and that's where I came across uh, this fly called the, uh, the Badger Grasshopper. Now um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, pronounced Badger and um, it is a river in New South Wales and um, you know, obviously John Sutherland had a lot of success with it and um, I've had a lot of success with it as well except I just changed one little aspect of it um, instead of natural deer hair in the tying of the fly I use a, a bright orange colour but this um, pattern um, is a ripper it's a really good one now it is uh, supposedly um, not supposedly but it does uh, require in the actual tying of it to be tied with green parrot feathers. Now, I haven't got any green parrot feathers, so I've used as a substitute Amherst um, feathers that have been dyed a grassy green colour, just like the grasshoppers. A fantastic uh, colour for those actual feathers. Um, like I say, it's done me well um, when fishing up around the uh, Rubicon River at Grasshopper Time and a number of other rivers and streams and even on a few lakes um, I've had success with this fly so it's a good fly to tie up and have in your box um, I always find to have a, a whole host of different patterns at Grasshopper Time and uh, even though we're seeing it you know before the grasshopper season you know we're still under lockdown with the uh, coronavirus uh, um, uh, epidemic or pandemic and um, you know we may be uh, restrictions may be released around summertime and so uh, we'll be able to get out there at grass up at times and you'll have this fly uh, readily uh, made up and ready to go all right so let's start to tie this fly the badger grasshopper now we start off um, as you can see we'll have the materials listed in front of me there and we start off with a size 10 long shanked hook all right so we'll start to tie that put the thread leave a gap for your hackle which is you know like a dry fly hackle at the front there which is a lot different to a lot of grasshopper patterns a lot of grasshopper patterns seem to have deer hair um, at the head there um, this one doesn't require that. It requires a dry fly hackle. Alright, down to the bend of the hook, and that's where we stop. Now, as I say, the next requirement is the Amherst um, pheasant feathers dyed a brink green. If you want to tie, uh, dye your own, um, that's quite good. You can get the, the best shade you require or you can just go to the shops and, and then pick this one and I find this one's a great colour um, always get it from uh, the uh, tackle shops uh, to that colour alright so we take the actual feather and I've already selected some already and we put the feather concave going up so as you can see there the concaves going up that way so we tie that in at that point there now when you do it make sure you tie in just the stem not the actual feather so you're going to have to select the right size feather to have success with that and see as you do that just on the stem it sits beautifully it sits perfectly um, the way you want it if you were to tie that where the, uh, the actual fibers of the feathers are it's going to scrunch up and it's not going to look good so there's a bit of a tip for you okay so 
so we come down a little bit and now we go back to where we were just before the feather now what we need next is peacock hair right. now what we're going to do with this peacock hair we're not going to just tie it on as in strands but we're going to create a dubbing loop we're going to select about four strands of peacock hair and put it in the dubbing loop and then we're going to twist it so that we get a really strong peacock hair body and it will last a lot longer and it will resist a lot of uh, trout's teeth you know what I'm saying so take one two three now I've got one over here on the side put all of them together and, it, and as you see with the peacock hair at the base you have uh, a section there where it's really you know, really hard and it hasn't got many um, he uh, much hair on the actual uh, stem of the, uh, the, uh, stem of the peacock hair there so we snip that little bit off and what we do is we tie in at this point here back again we'll create a bit of a lump there but we'll fix that when we do that uh, that section in now dubbing loop this is a tool that creates the dubbing loop that you need so what we do to use this dubbing tool or to create the dubbing loop we give ourselves a good length of thread and then we just simply slip that on that middle fork there like so and then we bring that over and down like so now we can lock that into place by just tying a few threads there and then advance to the point where we're going to put our second feather in about there and we take our peacock curl and we grab all four strands and then we grab the first one and we wrap with our fingers just wrap that around the top thread there of the loop all right so when we've got around about three or four turns then we use the actual dubbing loop and we twist it around give it quite a few turns Then I take it out of the loop and hold it nice and tight and then we proceed to tie now when we do this make sure you come just a little bit down from where that thick lump is there where we've put too much time for it and then advance your way down to our tying thread at that point there come back a bit if you need to get that body nice and even it can be very fiddly extremely fiddly
and then we tie it off. Alright, that gives us a, you know, a body of the grasshopper fly. Now if we wanted to make that even perfect, what we would do is just get a single strand, tie it in at that point there, like so. And then we'd wind back a little bit and then back forward so that we get that all nice and even. And then cut away the excess. All right. So there we have the tail or the uh, back end section of the badger grasshopper fly and the body. Now, next requirement is to take a feather and put it into the front there. All right. So we want to strip away the fibers on the side so we just have the stem because it'll tie in so much better when you just tie the stem in. And that's probably perfect. You want to go halfway um, of the concave and then you want it to be concave down. So the concave is going that way. So we position our over there and so we didn't go right on the stem there put on the stem and then it'll be perfect let's do that again That's about where we want it. Tie right down to the eye of the hook, cut the excess off. Alright, now we go back to where that feather's been tied in it, and now we select ourselves some deer hair. Now, the colour I like is an orange look at grasshoppers they've got orange and you could have even added a little bit of yellow to here if you wanted to but I'll just leave it at the orange green and orange uh, it tends to um, be the the proper colors for grasshoppers natural grasshoppers and when we select these deer hair fibers select yourself just a very fine about the width of a pen uh, uh, match matchstick don't want any more than that and what these do is actually uh, imitate the legs of the grasshopper. We're judging on to the... And just one loose turn around. Don't tighten it. Go back, grab the back end of the deer hair, and now tighten it so it spins those ones at the back there. As you can see them splaying out all right okay now we cut away the excess deer here Now, when we 
we tie this down tie it through the actual deer hair come back again and build up the thread so we've got a bit of a, a bit of a want there it's not even all right so we want it to be even so that when we tie the dry fly hackle all right, it'll be a lot better all right so that's good there all right now the next requirement is our dry fly hackle now what we need is cree feathers now like I said this before you can do it in a saddle curry and you've got your your neck capes. Now a saddle curry it's not going to get the size that we want, alright? You might be able to find some, I'm not saying you can't find them, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. And so we use the actual neck cape so that we've got the whole range of feathers. So if you want to tie tiny little 18s, there's your 18 feathers just there. Then they go up. Now, 16, 14, 12, all the way to a salt salt water. So necks are great when you're actually tying these flies in. So you select the uh, feather, cree feather, and before we tie it in, we judge it. So we take it out and we spy it out, and that's going to be perfect. We want it to be a little bit bigger. Um, well, not bigger but around about the, the gape of the hook is where we want those hackle fibers to extend to so the bits that we don't want and the, the really fixed stem we don't want the fixed stem all right and to the thinner stem and then we tie it into place grab our hackle pliers and then we create the hackle now when you use the neck cape feathers they're very they're not they haven't got much length to them so they can be difficult to hold so I use a hackle pliers there um, if you use saddles well they're such a long feather it's incredible and you can just hold on to that you don't need hackle pliers whatsoever so they're fantastic and that's the last bit there let me tie that off And cut away the excess. All right. Now, whip finish. Give yourself a length. Like I say, I usually use a whip finishing tool. But I can't buy one at the moment and so we use our hand get the loop, twist it, turn it over twist it, turn it over twist it, turn it over and then get your dubbing needle put it into the loop and then pull on the thread and handmade whip finish done off there and tidy it up a bit okay good. now as you can see the deer hair fibers the deer hair sticking out splay them out to the sides 
So it really gives it the length, the, imitates the legs beautifully. And what else you'll find is that when that lands on the water, those legs will act as stabilizers. And nine times out of 10, this fly will land upright. Won't be on its side, won't be upside down, it'll be upright. You can almost guarantee that. And um, it's a great pattern, guys. Um, really gives the coloration of a grasshopper. And um, it's got everything you want. It really has. So, um, hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, the Badger Grasshopper. And um, there's actually three Badger Grasshoppers. There's Badger Grasshopper number one. Badger Grasshopper 2, which is this one, and then Badger Grasshopper 3. They've got just additional adds uh, to it, like um, they use golden pheasant fibres for the legs um, in number 3. But I find this one um, really suffice uh, for you know, imitating grasshoppers. Great fly, guys. Alright, until the next episode, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on in fly fishing in nature's realm. Bye for now.